this. They, are, <laughs> did not the they actually magnets. steal the Magnus from them. Yeah, what I was trying to say, Fly has been really leaning towards playing his defensive supports, yeah. which he's you know, been known for playing so, so incredibly well. He's one of the teams, uh, it's uh, EG as a well, right? that has been picking the Winter Wyvern a lot. Yeah. Winter Wyvern, Dazzle even. And his Dazzle Shallow Graves have been insane this event. Yeah, and, the, and those heroes are just so incredibly hard to play against Silencer. So. Yes. Uh, Any defense, you can't play defensive supports against Silencer because every fight is going to start with that global silence. Yeah. When, when you're playing against Silencer as a support, you want to be you want to be something that's going to front load everything. You know, I've, I haven't seen much Warlock, but I actually like Warlock quite a lot against Silencer. You just, very beginning of the fight, you just drop all your spells and then you just chill for a couple seconds while you're silenced. Can't silence a giant burning demon. You, you cannot. Five well, you could, it's just he doesn't have any spells. <laughs> He'll just look at you and burn you to death. LGD's turn to they actually commit with two cores straight away. Because yeah. I, I assume that the Magnus is going to be on S4. Yeah, it's. Um, Pretty sure it's fun to be an S4 hero. Yeah, so this is No Tails, most likely No Tails PL. Yeah. A hero that he's played quite a bit. Another like semi illusion hero. I get, well, PL's an illusion hero, but it's different, right? It's a bit different, and it's like a combat illusion hero. Yeah. In addition to being a comfort hero for them, this patch or this tournament, it's also a very good matchup against the power editor lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can solo that ma matchup, right? Yeah. So that's usually the the go to go to place for this PL in the game against power editor. Yeah, it's, um, it's super convenient to have carries who can solo the offlaners, and that's why when LG reveals that Bat Rider, you say, okay, let's pick PL, and yeah. if it so happens that our PL is laning up against Bat, our supports can do other things. Yeah. Also, you've mentioned many times before, empowering on a melee core, really, really strong. Always looking for that Magnus melee core combination. The only problem here is that PL is not the best here with uh, Empower, I would say. He's more Definitely not. reliable on the illusions to multiply and deal damage with a diffusal blade. It's also the problem of if you're empowered on your main hero, then they'll know which one is real. It kind of tells, yeah, right away. Yeah, uh, it shows the <laughs> empower <laughs> Whoops. animation. But I wouldn't say it's, it's that big of a deal. I think PL usually builds a lot of stat items, which benefits a lot from empower. Definitely. Um, so He's going to do a ton of damage in the late game, no matter what. Yeah. They're also going to stack the Ancients and actually give Final Lancer a way to clear them faster. For sure. So there's a spend ban from OG. What what else are you worried about with like a Magnus PL draft? I'm not sure how the core matches go. I think one interesting thing about this draft is that most of the support heroes are being banned out. We already see... Nyx, Earth Spirit. Nyx, Earth Spirit, Kunkka. Kunkka. Three potential Jarex heroes that are just gone. Night Stalker um, picked. Night Stalker picked. There's going to be two more bands coming out. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if LGD targeted one of, a, one of their bands on... Could we see Monkey King for Jarex with uh, Empower? It's possible. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Monkey against both Night Stalker and, and, and Bat Rider. Why is that? Because I think Monkey King is he's in a pretty awkward spot as a four. I think Boboka is... Realistically, the only player that had any success with Monkey King as a four um, in this tournament, and I think that just comes down to his experience with the hero. Experience with the hero is like natural talent for the hero. It's uh, also two heroes here that actually can scout him when he's hiding in the trees. Yeah, uh, there's the that. The can fly during the night, and the bat can fly at any time. And I think in one of the scenarios where I would want to play a Monkey King as a four is if I had a, a very clear offlaner in my lane that I could so easily with my passive. But against Bat Rider, it's incredibly difficult. Yeah. There's the Tusk still that uh, Peter was talking about before. Yeah. Tusk is a little less scary, especially when your heroes can fly over ice shards. Um, yeah, but it's actually quite a bad pick for them right yeah, now. Yeah, it is. But it is a super comfort pick. What else? What has Jarex played? I've, we've seen him play Visage once or twice. Um, you know, I would definitely prefer him to be on some sort of tempo hero. There's still an Earthshaker, actually. Earth, oh, wow. Earthshaker's still in the pool. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. That uh, could actually work super well with the Magnus as well, as we were talking about, that you like, really want to give him some uh, space and uh, levels early on, and the Magnus can help him with that by blocking the wave. Yeah. Uh, up against Night Stalker and Batrider, though, you kind of want to be able to push or have some sort of vision hero to deal with this? Or what, what do you think is the best route for LG, or OG to go at this point? Uh, I would agree with that. I wouldn't sur be surprised if they started looking towards some, some Templar Assassin or something like that, which is incredibly useful against the Night Stalker with the, the traps giving off vision. Oh, man, they took the Shaker too. That's another JRX hero down. And that's what... Okay, so that's... Uh, hmm. Are those, are those two supports there? Which, which two heroes are playing support there? I would assume Night Stalker is 
by default support. Batrider has been played as support by a lot of Western teams, but I haven't really seen the Chinese do it yet. So, yeah, you're almost like a Chinese expert, right? Like you have a lot of friends on Chinese teams. Yeah, he's yeah, also a good friend of mine. I know Jaiwei pretty well as well, and LGD is obviously their their home. So I'm I'm somewhat familiar with them. But you got an LGD jacket, right? Yeah, I, I got one at DSC, the first one I think. You gonna cop one here? Uh, I don't know. I'm more of a a newbie fan. Now. Oh my gosh, you've changed. I've changed. Have you told Yao? I haven't. I it's gonna break his heart. It's gonna break his heart, especially if he loses this one. Nice. <laughs> You're gonna give him the bad news as well today? We'll see. But speaking of bad news, there's also good news if you're an LGD fan, because Riawe had his uh, first baby the other day. Oh. Which most people probably don't know unless they follow the Chinese team. Wow. There's something. Congratulations to him. Lich, Ake, you. Mm. I feel like started really loving Lich, and over time your love for him slowly dwindled. Yeah, uh, like we talked about it yesterday, the people or teams uh, more that they understood how to play against Lich, and uh, people have been picking Chris and Maiden and those heroes, but uh, here at, at the least it's not a first pick Lich that we've been seeing the other games, but I mean Night Stalker is good against Lich, so these picks are fast. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, kind of, you know, different Leshrac pick. We've, I think we've seen LGD yeah. play it before. Maybe it's been been a Leshrac fan this tournament. He's played it multiple times in mid. This is kind of an anti melee core. It There's is lots of AOE like ground damage around yeah. him. I would imagine Very the matchup against PL is also super good versus PL. Yeah, that was like a that was like a TI five thing, right? Yeah, PL versus Lesh. Well, I mean, often Leshrac is <laughs> sent to the mid lane, and I mean, what do you think about the fact that it was an instant response by picking Ember Spirit? It seems like it will naturally be a difficult matchup. Yeah, I think Fly will probably look towards sitting uh, with, with Ember Spirit in mid um, if they go for this Ember Spirit, because as you said, it's it's not an ideal matchup for, for Ember. So, Aki, do you think this is an appropriate Lich game, or what do you, what do you think Fly is going to be able okay. to do? It's okay. Uh, the only problem I see is that it's not a physical heavy lineup so far, at least on LGD, so the Ice Armor won't really do that much, and yeah. they have the Night Stalker that can roam around and uh, use that the Lich is standing still on a, a lane. So. Oji's lineup looks a little slow to me. So I mean, but uh, it's a good hero in uh, the way that they can actually make sure that uh, Ana is having a good game on the Ember Spirit. Yeah. Even Def though it's a hard matchup mid with uh, Lesh Rock, so it can do the job. I think this is going to be the most interesting pick of the draft. Um, we'll see what OG goes for. Uh, last last band, Bounty Hunter? Yeah. So. LGD is trying to, you know, come up with using all of their creative creativity to come up with whatever JRX is going to play. Um, but maybe it's going to be Magnus. Like it's a mind game that he's going to play that because they haven't picked his hero yet, and a lot of his heroes has been banned. I'd like OG to pick another initiator. I know I keep going back to that, but yeah. having Magnus to be the only person to really initiate your fights. I know Ember can kind of do it with with sleight of fist and chains, but it's super hard if you know Darkness is on and then. Yeah. It's a, it's a tall task to ask your Magnus to initiate fights for you into darkness with yeah. a Batrider flying around as well. So since LGD gets the fifth pick, we've talked a lot this event about how influential that final pick has been. Is there a, any key hero you see LGD might be looking for that OG could be worried about or that LGD is well set up for? It's going to be their carry hero. I think it's pretty clear at this point right, that it's going to be aim zero. Yeah, you definitely want something that can deal with. I mean, Leshrac can kind of deal with the PL illusions. Ember Spirit doesn't really have many hard counters. Like it's really hard to like just counter an Ember Spirit like that, especially with your core hero. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. W I'm not sure what direction they're going to go with that final pick. It'll be interesting to see. Maybe something a little bit different than we've seen at this tournament. I think they're leaning more towards hard carries as this tournament has gone on. I was going to say anti mage, but OG messed it out. Uh, I think it would have been a pretty good anti mage game. Not that much hard lockdown on on OG's side. Yeah, once they go late game, I'm sure the Night Stalker, Batrider, and Anti Mage trio would reign supreme. Yeah. So Jerex needs a hero unless he wants to play this Magnus as support skewers from people up cliffs. But yeah, it's, it's I mean, we haven't seen OG really wait this long on Jerex's hero this tournament. It's been generally one of their first two picks. Yeah, but I think that's the specific approach that they took to this game. They decided on stealing the Magnus away, which kind yeah. of makes it hard for them to pick Jerex's hero, and that's not mm -hmm. shifting priority to take away heroes from LGD rather than 
pick heroes they want for themselves. Yeah. And it also doesn't really matter if they pick his hero fourth or fifth, because they're still okay. going to have to pick the hero before LED is going to pick their last hero. So, Rubik, one of these ranged fours that we've seen yeah. doing decently well, mostly Yapsor from Team Secret playing it. Um, but it, it acts in the same way. I'm sure he'll be roaming around and helping out lanes as much as he can. It's one of those years that Jerex used to be incredibly famous for it, but in recent times he hasn't really played it that much. Yeah, definitely uh, fallen out of favor. I'm sure he's still very comfortable with the hero. It's it's actually it's pretty good against Lush Rack. You can steal a lot of great spells, also being Shaker able to get Fissure. Well. Yeah. So they do go for the support bar editor. Yao picks it up. Uh, Shaker's going to default to the offlane. And Bristleback appears to be in the hard carry position, so... The lineups have been set. LGD will be taking on OG in the lower bracket, best of three. Whoever wins this moves on. Whoever loses is out. Let's get the series underway. Here we go, Lumi, OG taking on LGD. I think the last time we saw OG in a similar position, this early in the lower bracket was the Frankfurt Major 2015. It's too early to talk about making the run the whole way, but this is, for the first time, they've gotten that monkey off their back. They've taken some games here on TI, new roster, it's a new day, and they've taken a new approach. LGD coming into this match, 8-1 and one on Magnus, but OG, they've stolen it away with the first pick. Yeah, OG, I think they're definitely coming alive, you know, beating Infamous, taking uh, the series yesterday against TNC very easily. I think this is going to be the first true test. I think Infamous and TNC, some would argue, are not at the level of OG. LG definitely is. And I think moving forward, both of these teams could make a very deep run. But like you mentioned, let's focus one series at a time. One game at a time. One game at a time. If you're OG, if you're LGD. For LGD, a duo that's been very successful this event. Uh, Yao going to be playing the Batrider. And we have Victoria on the Night Stalker this. Vision control, pick off centric duo, but they're up against some elusive here cores here. You've got the PL, you've got the Ember Spirit, not the easiest ones to initiate on. Uh, that said, OG, they don't really have a vision hero in their own right, which has caused quite a few teams problems heading into this main event. Hey Amen. Rubik steals out of Napalm, start zapping the map a little bit, <laughs> tiny bits of vision. Uh, but don't, uh, don't rule anything out with Jerex. I, I do want to kind of mention the draft a little bit in terms of the, the speed of how these teams will play. Uh, the last time that these two teams met up was at MDL. They had two series against each other in that tournament. And LGD took all of the games. They didn't lose a single one to OG. And in that particular tournament, they play a very same style, same speed as the draft that we're seeing here. LGD going for the very comfort mid-game pick, mid-game dominance. And OG kind of fell into the trap. OG was picking support heroes like Phoenix that was a little bit slow. And I think this is, again, stylistically a very same type of draft. And I think LGD's got their number when it comes to this kind of speed of games. We'll see if it actually will come to fruition, but right now, good start here as LGD will be able to secure three bounty rings. Yeah, they definitely have very up-tempo picks. So uh, the laning stage, even then, you have the Night Stalk or the Shaker who can move around relatively early. You've got pretty difficult to gank lanes here with the Batrider for Yao in the off lane, Ame, the safe lane Bristle. Uh, of course, the Leshrac is a bit vulnerable. LGD have played the hero, I believe, four times coming into this game. They only lost one. That was the game against VP, where yep. VP just ran at maybe all game long, and he never really got going. They ran at everybody. Yeah, I think did. that's the style that you want to take to LGD. You know, they're, they're a very comfortable team if you give them the laning stage. They, they are slow to adapt once, you know, you just lose two to three lanes. But let's talk about this game here. Yao supporting on the Batrider on the mid lane. We'll just stack the Napalm and Ana. Has a magic stick queued up, but definitely will want it right now. Yeah, Victoria also roaming around uh, on the Night Stalker, at least for now. As we see 11, 11 dropping low in this top lane. Jarek trying to bring him out, gets off the lift. No tails there with the follow up, and it's an early first <laughs> one to OG. And I don't know if it's actually a disaster, but it's certainly a good start here. We're definitely seeing Earthshaker switch up their skill build here. What you used to do on Earthshaker off lane is you used to block, the fissure to block, and then, you know, j just to get the creep equilibrium back. Uh, casual tri lane mid, slow on it down early. That's the recipe for LGD. They move on to him. Four napalm charges, and they will quickly break through that low level flame guard. Five napalm charges. Down he goes. LGD putting the pressure on Ana early. Now Jarek's coming in. Maybe might want to make a go on him, but a good lift interrupts and will reset. I think that the beauty of this pressure is how early it's coming. Something that the panel pointed out is that LG likes to roam their supports as they hit level twos and three. This is one minute, 30 seconds in the game, and I think that might have caught OG off guard. Yeah, you've got a tri lane level one Night Stalker bat only just now hitting level two with the dual lane. So yeah. where this duo is known for their roaming around that eight to 15 minute mark, they're getting started very early. Good skewer here bottom. It's going to drag Ame back under the tower. 
looking at this particular lane, historically we do see Bristleback do very well in 1v1s against melee heroes, but really on S4 getting his CS. I mean, he is going to get his farm, but I think the beauty of the, the lane for LGD right now is it frees up the two support, right? Ame is going to be fine in this 1v1, which allows the Batrider and the Night Stalker to be off the map. Batrider in particularly, especially when you play him in a support position, he needs to stack for himself. They have found Fly here deep behind enemy lines with Yao stacking up the Napalm. He's got the point in Firefly. He's got there no is TV. no teleport yeah, scroll. He is. Pedestrian Lich, just a <laughs> casual stroll, but will they be able to wrangle him down? Tries to get on top oh, of him. Sure. Running low on mana here, though. He's only going to have one more Napalm stack. I don't know if he actually gets Fly. He's going to try uh, okay. the angle Fly's taking. Six Napalm stacks, roasting, and will go down. And while that was happening, maybe actually takes down Ana solo in the mid lane. Yeah, he's got a double damage rune, and that was a big factor in that. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Ame dodging away from that uh, Shockwave. 11 almost died top while it was all happening. So action all over the map, but so far, so good for LGD. That kill on Ana, especially, very crucial, as he's now died two times already. Yeah, I'm, I'm also surprised why uh, Fly was making that kind of cavalier movement across the map. As a Lich, you generally just stay in the lane and, and help out whoever you're laning against. That sacrifice has not been used for a long time, and it just breaks my heart, man. Finally, he does cast it on the mid lane. Fly going back to getting his. Perhaps wanted to get a ward down, as there is a Batrider, uh, a Night Stalker, or so, um, a Bristleback, and a Leshrac. Three heroes who can clear these stacks pretty early. Yep. So it may have been on Fly's mind, as there is, in fact, already a single double stack here near that mid lane. The danger for OG is that LGD is able to do so much, and it's daytime. You know, we're going to head into nighttime about 20 seconds, and now uh, Victoria's level two. He's, a, he's got the boots, so I think he's going to be able to apply more pressure. I wonder where the pressure is going to go to, though. Two supports, smoked up. Nighttime, let's go. Night is about to fall, and LGD get aggressive here. No direct vision of this rotation, and who do they find? It's Mr. Fly in the river. The sacrificial lamb, it appears. Yao, though, still on the chase. They'll slowly work him down. One more round of auto attacks. Kill secured, but now it's Ana who has to be cautious. With a haste and picked up. Will be fine as long as this is active. But did commit his flame guard. And meanwhile, on the top lane, 11 being hounded here. OG on the chase. Lance comes in. Jerex there has the lift if needed. Blocks him in with his body. The totem, not enough damage though. 11 does bring him low. Is there any TP support? No siree. Their eyes are on Ana mid. I think that haste just ended and they will descend now. Looking to catch him out. The flame guard and cooldown. Goes for the slight. The stun is there. Follow up comes through. LGD, can they burn him down? Yes, siree. They do it again. Another death for the Ember. Three deaths for Ana early in this middle lane. Something that the panel touched on is shut down Ana, and they have done just that. And it seems like it's very easy for LGD to shut down Ana. The Lich mid lane to me have pretty much no impact. You could even make the argument that Lich is making the lane weaker. We've seen, He's I think, a lot. Three, three or four ga Lich games on this main stage where the Liches have not helped their team secure the laning stage. It seems like everyone's grown more adept at just ganking, For sure. punishing the Liches' lack of defensive capabilities getting ahead early. As LGD smoke up fly, did break that smoke. I'm not a he does have a ward here on the hill as well, so realizes something is up. In fact, two wards. They can swing back Very nervous four. about these early pressure rotations. Instead, Victoria, though, looking to cut him off. It's a pretty tanky hero to dive under the tower. Eight stick charge is also available. They'd love to kill the Magnus before he hits six. But it seems this gank will be thwarted. Nice Stalker non-stop movements across the map. No points into uh, Crippling Fear just yet. We'll make some of these uh, ganks a little bit tougher, like, you know, preventing S4 Skewer or the ultimate from the Ember Spear. But for now, we're going to look to bottom here. He did have a, a ward previously. I think it just expired. And now S4 Look at Yao's out. preparation. He knows where he's going to go. S4 being read like a book. Six to two, the score. One kill per minute. You talked about high tempo, Lumi. That's exactly what we're seeing. LGD are not giving OG any breathing room. Top lane. The one lane that you could arguably say that it's going pretty good for OG, but still. I think Shaker is one of those heroes that you give him a minute or two of free farm time, he'll be just fine. He's actually going back for an Iron Talon, so looking to recover in the jungle. Something that you don't see too often for Shakers. But I've seen a lot more of the early blink rushes, some sort of casual mana item to help you spam. 
those enchant totems and fissures, but LGD keep the aggression flowing in this bottom lane. S4, he did go for those early points uh, in Empower as well as Skewer, but now maxing out the Shockwave here. He is one of their main sources of deep push. He gets the two here, Skewer. However, it may have spilled his downfall. The chase oh. comes out, double TP in, single TP out. Victoria gonna scurry away. They cancel one, they brought in Power. two more. Huge commitment for this tower, and they get the deny. S4 will... Avoid giving away too much gold here to LGD. And but at the same time, Lumi, it's a Night Stalker bat and a tower has fallen. The other thing is that because so many people poured it to the bottoms, maybe was able to just let loose this Diabolic Edict and deal a significant amount of damage to that tier, tier 1 mid. Now, I think the tier 1 bottom is not as important uh, as we've seen in this main event so far, but getting that tier 1 mid down so low makes the next gank into push a lot easier once you do open up the map. They're rotating top, but a dire scan reveals maybe. Cracks the Pulse Nova. He wants to group up here and make a play as 11 was about to hit level 6, but no tail. The rest of OG suss him out. We'll retreat to safety. We'll see if we have a further skirmish here. Victoria roaming up the hill and into two. Can they bring him down though? He's rather tanky and it is nighttime for 10 seconds longer. Wow. Tries to get over the cliff, but they clip the wings, taking Victoria out. Two kills now for OG over the last couple minutes. One tower down. So, seems as the night ends, LGD likely will back off for a little bit. What's next for them, Lumi? They've had a, it seems, a very successful start to this game. I think you want to get your Batrider's economy up. He's been kind of uh, very studious, stacking up the jungle for himself and, and then farming it. And then you want to give space to a Shaker. Uh, LGD doing well right now, but they definitely need a Blink Shaker to kind of maintain their lead in the mid game. And granted, they have very good kind of mobile active cores to allow them to do so. You know, maybe on the Lashrak, he could help pushing buildings, he could help for ganks. And of course, Ame on the Bristleback can do uh, the same thing. So I think LGD game plan working very well so far. Yeah, we already saw the bat stacks previously near the mid lane. He's now managed to hit level five as a roamer. Pretty successful start for him. Did get a bit of experience early mid. Also, the Bristleback Ancients were stacked up previously. You can actually see Yao going to stack them once more. So, diligent and very efficient with his time in these early moments. How about OG? What's next for them? It's really hard to say because I feel like their heroes are so under-leveled that they are unable to do too much. Rubik, not close to 6. I mean, Lich also wants 6 before you, you know, start that big engagement. It's a Lich who's lower level than a Batrider that's been ganking nearly constantly. Yeah, uh, he hasn't been able to ca uh, cast a sacrifice. But top lane, 11 does get pick, caught off here. We're able to pick him off. The Echo's available. No Town knows he needs to be very careful about how he pursues. Probably hoping to force a TP, but 11 is very patient. And LGD won't overcommit to that. I think the big point here for OG is going to be the Blink Dagger timing for Magnus, but S4 has also got a very tough time in the early lane stage. This is the first time I've seen LGD win so hard in the early game in the main event, and this is where they're strong at, you know, this stage of the game and the next 15 to 20 minutes. A big is part of it, how they always win all their games. A big part of it is how OG drafted, right? Because they picked a Magnus first. This hero is not known for his laning prowess. They followed up with two cores that need a bit of time to come online. Ember Spirit, not known for lane dominance. PL, pretty strong in the laning stage, but also a hero that generally will sit in his lane that first 10, 15 minutes for the most part. Uh, and passive supports. The Rubik who can get aggressive, but needs a partner to roam with. And of course, Jerax really needs to be a big impact player for the team as they're a bit light in the initiation department. So he spent a lot of time farming and it's in part because of that passivity of OG's draft that it feels like LGD have been allowed to dictate the tempo early. Yeah, passivity from the support, uh, from the Lich, from the Rubik as well. I mean, what we saw out of Jerax yesterday, he was breaking smokes up hills, he was planting very deep wards, he was active all over the map with heroes like Earthshaker as well as Earth Spirit. But today, just very silent. Here comes the next bout of aggression. LGD smoked up and out in front to try and reveal this. Is nice Mr. Auto, but he gets caught out here. Can they lasso him down? They do have it available. They drag him back in. They'll pick him off. They lost the Shaker, though. It was a good start from Ana, but the persistence of LGD does begin to pay off as Jerax moves in. He's got the lasso of his own, but he's going to die very quickly here. He does manage to get it off. Dranky maybe a deeper. They got to burst him down fast. The Pulse Nova flying out. Ame joins the fray. This bristle backs full HP, and now OG scrambling the retreat. Keeps on chasing forward. Can they get out successfully? He's trying to focus on no tail here. Still a few seconds for this doppelganger, but the Frost Armor keeps him alive. The Shockwave forces him away, and OG end up breaking evenly here. 
there after what looked like a very bad start. Well, that one value point of Frost Armor did so much. They're giving No Tail the uh, armor that he needs to survive the Quill Spray, as well as giving the attack speed slow as the Bristleback does layer his uh, a flail weapon, I guess is what it's called. But look at the dodge here with this. Whoo! That was sick. Otherwise, Ana dies very early in the fight. Instead, they have to commit a lot to bring him down. The lasso's blown on him. Jarek's able to steal that. And LGD can... While they chase forward, they're running right into the big AoE combo of OG. Yeah. Lestrak went in, but right now in the game, he's not tanky enough to sit in the front line like that. And he got quickly brought down as well. This is the real, I, I think, the low point for Lesh, where you've got all your mono region items, your farming items, but he has yet to pick up that first HP item, the point booster, maybe the vitality booster of the Bloodstone. So he's especially vulnerable at this stage. Yeah, I'm surprised that he hasn't picked up his point booster yet. He's got the gold to do so, but... I guess uh, that fight was a little bit too fast. Definitely could have saved Maybe's life there. Or at least discouraged OG from chasing so far. So a win for OG. But they might have to forfeit this tower now. Even with the Frost Armor up, it seems like they want to trade. No tails on the bottom lane. The Lesh is going to likely edict that tower down. Although, as I say that, he seems to be rotating. So OGD not doing this particularly quickly. No tails a lot more committed. Yeah, that Frost Armor again being super annoying to this Bristol back push. And finally, the Shrek will move up and take the building, but I think they lost a lot of time while doing so. They could have already had this tower down and been pushing towards the Tier 2. Or defending their Tier 1s. Right. You know, whatever is more important to them. But Ana is going to get a significant amount of damage to this mid-Tier 1. As we've been mentioning, the mid-Tier 1 is really what gives you the map control for your side of the map. Ancient's being stacked up here in the meanwhile by OG as well. Obviously with the Magnus, the Ember, they've got some farm potential of their own. See Jerex snagging a pretty big spell. That's a great Level one. 4 Split Earth and yeah. has the, the much better cast animation. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, Lashrak, he, he have to, the pony has to go up, his arms waving about, but Jerex is just, he's the Grand Magus. Quick spell, quick cast. Yeah. Skips out on all the dancing and shenanigans and just yeah. gets straight, straight to the pain. So LGD are going to slow down now, it is nighttime. A very modest lead. They're going to farm up their Ancients. Next steps for LGD, Lumi. What do you want to see out of them? I want to see a faster Blink Dagger from O11. Remember X XSS the other day? He was able to find such an early and quick Blink, and he was just all over the map, hounding an Earth Spirit, as well as a Faceless Void. Or sorry, uh, Emperor Spirit and a Faceless Void. This game, I think he is the best and most reliable initiation against your Ember, against the PL. But because he's so slow, and granted he had a very tough lane, I think Ochi will feel like, okay, we still have a lot of time in this game where we get to farm a little bit more bravely on the map. Well, maybe is closing in on the Bloodstone now, only 150 gold shy. So should be getting it with this next wave. Pretty good timing for Lesh. Certainly a lot better than what we saw yesterday. Also, S4 has his uh, Blink Dagger now, so... Lots of key items coming, and it looks like OG about to smoke up and make their first aggressive move of the game. I think what they want to get out of this is a clean two-man kill into a Tier 1 mid-push. And wrapping into the jungle. It's tough to do this at nighttime. At the same time, perhaps LGD won't expect it, though. They are hanging rather far back for now. OG should be able to at least get a deep ward down. And in fact, LGD smoke, they move in, but OG already in position. The smoke is broken. Victoria flies high. He gets off the Sans and on to start, but wait for the blink. Look for S4. Will he find the opening? The lasso comes through. The RP's only on the Batrider, and it's after the lasso. Not the best start, but Jerks can follow up. Steals the Fissure. The chain stun is coming, though. Will he be able to do much after this? Ame still stands strong. No Tail's got a back way. They get the 11 kill as well. They've traded an Ember, and so far, so good, but they might lose No Tail to Silence. And now in round two, LGD chasing forward. They want Jerex as well. Well, getting the goo on the Rubik could spell trouble. He's got Fissure. Got Fissure, though, blocks them off, not completely, but far enough away that LGD won't pursue. So two heavy cores down for OG. Meanwhile, LGD trading utility heroes. And that engagement was the exact scenario that the panel pointed out, where, sure, you have Magnus, you have Point Dagger, but during nighttime, where do you find the vision to get the initiation? Both teams were smoked up, the smoke breaks, and of course, the team with a Night Stalker in the front line is able to get the better vision advantage. Smoke breaks, Victoria just flies in the air, gets perfect vision, they know where the Magnus is, and as a result, sure, the you know, RP came out, but like you mentioned, it's only a one-man RP. So easy for the rest of LGD just to come in and give them the easy victory. It's also two flights where Fly has not really gotten the best Chain Frost bounces. The last flight, fight, I think it didn't even bounce at all, or maybe bounced once, so 
perhaps something that could change the equation, but again, for OG, executing this big AoE combo is a lot more difficult because of that vision disadvantage. You could make the argument that he'll get a great chain for us if everyone was clumped up in the RP, right? So I, th I think it kind of goes both ways. Right. Um, like they're, you mentioned. They're very reliant on the RP, yeah. at least for now. And I think this is where PPD brought up, like, you know, you, you rather see a secondary initiator. Um, it, it's so hard for the Magnus player to just be that initiation right from the get-go. But perhaps, let's say, if you have an Earth Spirit or if you have, you know, a, like Kunga, for example, that could set up the, the first half of the engagement, and then the Magnus comes in as, you know, the big bomb, then the team fight goes much, much better, better for OG. So we do see the Night Stalker Helm of the Dominator build again. Lil Ratness the other day was extremely successful. He is already doing some scouting with his Hellbear Smasher. So a couple of interesting... Oh. Hold that thought, Lumi. We've got S4 getting caught out here. Fissure stolen again. An even bigger grab than the kill. Jerax stealing the right spells here. This could, this could be the setup for that big RP next time around. He has it before a big fight breaks out. So the other day, the, uh, the Helm of Dominator on the Night Stalker allows him to you know, first of all, stack, be that secondary chain stun cancel, uh, canceling TPs and things like that. But one interesting that creep that he could actually opt to get for this game is the uh, the purge creep, the satyr, the tiny satyr creep. Yeah. You could purge off these like really annoying buffs like ice armor. You could purge off things like empower. I'm not sure whether he's going to go for that route, but it's definitely some some option that he has. That could be huge for them. Uh, as far as other item progression goes, uh, it looks like Ana is going to build an early Yule scepter here. So feeling very pressured by that Night Stalker silence. Not going to go for any big damage items or like a greedier boots of travel. But in fairness, he will be farming quickly with the Empower as long as he's not being ganked. Grabs a double damage rune now. OG clustered near the Roche pit. Is it about that time where Roche is on the menu for other team? I think both teams are not great at taking Roshan. Although uh, OG is definitely better. Um, Dire they have, they have the Bristleback. Yeah, they have the Bristleback, whereas OG has, you know, PL, which is notoriously one of the worst heroes to do Roche with. So OG more afraid that LGD might try to walk into the pit. Yeah. But OGD definitely needs... I don't think either team could just walk in and take it. They have to get a successful fight to do so. And right now, again, I'm just, like, checking on, on Levin's farm, and he is still so far away. This is an offlane shaker at 19 minutes. Four position shakers sometimes get blinked by now. I guess, in fairness, you know, Yao has been occupying the jungle, but it's, it is a very slow start. Yeah. He's got the uh, Iron Talon as well, you know, to supplement that farm, but... Yao is going to pursue, though. It's nighttime, and they're on the hunt. Jarek sees this coming. Yao will blink due north, and in doing so, misses the opening. <laughs> Immediately, Jarex says, let's smoke, gang. I don't, I don't know if they actually want to do it during darkness, but OG are looking to push up here mid. And you just give up a tier one for free. So not even contested. OG knocked the tier one down. That's two for them. Holding almost even LGD with the one tower edge thus far. Which I think OG have to be pretty happy about. They're not really much of a pushing lineup. And they're only slightly behind the lash. The bristle. LGD grouping up for a tier two. They might be looking to make a move here on Ame in the mid lane. No town pushing him back now as Ame is going towards a Radiance build. So going to be playing more of that hard carry bristle, give them a little more access into late game. Not going for those big five man items. We have seen that build before where you just pick up like your completed pipe very early on. Potentially just look to five man a lot more. Not a super big thing, but I think having Radiance on your team, especially against a Blink Dagger user like Magnus, is super annoying for him. Oh, OG on the smoke. They try to get Victoria here. They will catch him out with the Veil coming through, but they are ganking into a Shrine. Nobody there to help. OG with a clean kill, taking down the Night Stalker at a time that should be his. And now perhaps going to take this tier on top as well. He was actually busy microing his Satyr Banisher, and then I, I think his hero just kind of ran the wrong way. Oh, there's that Purge Creep you mentioned. Yeah. It's the hidden downside <laughs> to, to going for the helm. Uh oh, they actually see 11. Oh, yeah, 11. It would be a juicier kill. He's 500 gold from the blink, but OG catching him out and stealing the Fissure again. Jerax is loving this game. They might even get that Purge Creep, Bloomy. <laughs> Comes the PL, lancing oh it out. God. Jerex now can try and fissure Yao with the trees. He gets him! a TP! He gets him too! Well, he's got the blink, so he shouldn't really die here, but he's kind of stuck in a proper position. Yeah. 
The crazy thing for OG, oh my god, Yao blinks in, they see him, they, and now... <laughs> they have the chain frost, pokey pokey! No. Nope. Okay, yeah. Wow, wow. the play is from Jax. That is so cloudy. <laughs> oh my goodness. This Painful is the crazy thing, they're able to do this during nighttime, which is supposed to be LGD's strength. I think LGD is definitely making a lot of blunder. They, they lack plays because the Shaker don't have blink. They can't make for these like big smoke angs into the enemy jungle because they don't really have a very reliable initiator. Sure, Batrider has got blink, but against heroes like Ember Spirit as well as PL, the blink Batrider sometimes is too slow. You need something a little bit more guaranteed. The man of the hour. Stolen Fissure three, four times now. Using it to farm can basically insta-kill the wave. With just that nuke combo. So this will accelerate Jarex's farm. The Yule's not complete on Ana. Gonna go back for the BOTs. You can see the items starting to come in for OG. We'll have better initiation with this. S4 can potentially bide his time, sit back a little bit. Also wants to build a Yule Scepter. Again, the jump. Now OG looking on mid. Chain Frost coming through. Ana looking to lock him down. Has the chains available and will hold him in position for now. The Bristle buff. Back being assaulted from all sides, but in comes the reinforcements. They do bring the bristle down. The last one now committed, trying to finish off No Tell. They're roasting in the Pulse Nova. He jumps up onto the high ground. Victoria tries to do that, but the stolen Fissure! Jurex making the plays! Not enough. They will end up losing two. The cores fall. They did manage to get the bristle back. And it ends up being a bit of an LGD win here. A big LGD win. They also committed the RP for that. I think that was very unlucky bounces from the Lich. It only hit him one time. That was the initial cast. There was no bounce back. It's just, they got dispersed in the creep wave. As for Ooh. quick snipe, but maybe the punish now. Oh, Fisher gonna win. Then the boulder toss stolen comes in. He gets Fissure. thrown on the other side. A fresh stolen Fissure. Eleven keeps on giving it away. And now Jarex wants to chase him out. They might actually be able to kill him, Fissure. Ready, it's a bit too far to go and is being hounded by that rock golem. Still maybe, he finds an opening here. He's gonna take that top tower down. BOT's up, quietly, he has not died. So up to 16 Bloodstone charges now. And I think more importantly, he's working towards the BKB. There is no answer whatsoever from OG. He's not working towards it, he's basically got it. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. And So what? what is the answer when he activates the BKB? There's no physical damage whatsoever right now on OG. You he, run away, right? <laughs> you try to dodge that that fight. With well, the... trying to run away from Fissure, Goo, Night Stalker, Bat Rider, these are not the heroes that you could you could easily run away. So I think LGD has hit a very strong timing. That blink dagger I keep asking about on O11, it's available now. He's working towards a four staff. I think LGD, maybe they wait for the next natural night and then they just go. Just take no take fights. As for OG, potentially they can chain stun him. There is no direct save here for LGD. Uh, if they manage to catch the Lashrak out, but at the same time, there's a lot of counter initiation. The Earthshaker Echo, uh, potentially Yao jumping into the back lines and lassoing somebody. So, like you said, it's it feels like a very strong timing for LGD now. Would love to see them get a gem soon if they can work it into their economy, so they can extend that map control edge. Because OG have three great wards down right now, Lumi. Actually, four. They see a lot of this map and could well catch LGD trying to go for a smoke play. Heading into the next night time. Team sitting back for now, biding their time. The Fissure comes in, Jarex looking to start. They are going to try and slay the beast. Can they change the wow. skewer Combo. coming through? But he gets the BKB up. Now S4 is in danger. Yule Scepter committing with the Pulse Nova. Fissure the other direction, and now the last one. Yeah, looking for more. They're going to bring down the Magnus. The RP was saved for a rainy day. And the rain might be falling rapidly at this rate. He has no buyback, though. Has he opened up a path towards the Roche Pit? Perhaps, do LGD chance it? They definitely want to defend their tier 2 bottom, though. PL is doing a very excellent job, making a, a good situation out of that one here. And yeah, we're going to see maybe Port's bottom. What? You say that, but he gets here. echoed. Now the totem as well. Maybe try to change some, but it's not quite right. No time matches to juke away. The micro skills are a bit lacking as LGD still nuke him down. Nice silence. Charging forward. Ana wants to get aggressive here, but as mentioned, he is silenced. Jarex lurking. Gets the tier of Fissure. Chain Frost coming through. How much will it bounce once? Oh, and again, Fly can't get these bounces. Still might be enough, though. Victoria's on the run. Yao with the Yule Scepter trying to stay alive. They don't finish up the Night Stalker. They will cage the bad. So they get something, and actually the Night Stalker did get clipped as Jarex jumping in at the final moment, manages to take Victoria down. The Still though, OG are losing a lot of cores here, Lumi. Yeah, they lost the PL, the critical kill of, of Going for Lashrak, not possible. He is so tanky now. 18 Bloodstone charges with still a 19, uh, nine second BKB. 
How do you kill this Lashrak? If they're perfect, they might have been able to. Like, the RP came a half second late, quarter of a second late. At least, maybe they bring him low enough he's running away, but... Yeah. For now, at least, they, are, they do feel a bit lacking in the physical damage department. It's an empowered PL who can hit fairly hard, but also does not want to be standing next to Lash in the middle of a fight. I mean, they could definitely kill Lashrak if he's on his own, but... All Shaker has to do is to just throw in one Fissure, and then I, I think suddenly it's... BKB uh, and the fight turns. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other big thing is that, you know, as we've been pointing out, Jax has been able to steal these Fissures too easily. I think O11s definitely need to pepper in Enchant Totems uh, in between his spell casting, if possible. So far, I haven't seen Jax steal, steal anything apart from Fissure, That's the Shaker. True. That's true. Any other spells that you have your eyes on? We did see the Lasso steal early in the game. So that could be a nice pickup, and the Lesh the Lesh stun. The Lesh stun is well. quite good. Um, Lightning is also not bad from the Lesh rack because the slow that you get. So again, the cast animation on, on Rubik is so good that you could kind of sit far back, get that Lightning out. And but if you pick one spell, it's Fissure every time. For sure. So. LGD gonna slow things down now. Taking a look at their item progression. BKB is coming for Ame, but before he gets it, they've got an Alpha Wolf. They'll bring it into the Roach Pit, looking for an early Aegis and potentially a timing push. There's only. Two tier twos up right now for OG. It's nighttime, Lumi. Can they contest this road? Will they try? He's already down to half. They are streaming towards the pit. It looks like they want to take this fight. Look for the jump forward. Illusions are going to get the scent of what's going on. But Hero's yet to commit forward. Just slowly plotting the man. S4 looking for the jump, but he does get fissured. Blocked away for now. Has to bite his time. Ana can start the party if he wants to jump in with a remnant. OGD also does Roshan very slowly, so there's a lot of opportunity OG for OGD. are looking for it. S4 with the RP. He only gets the Bristle. Now pulling him in. The Chain Frost is going to bounce. They might build a burst him. It's a huge kill. Bristle down. That is next. He buys back. Line. He's going to buy back, though. Time for round two. And in the meanwhile, they do lose their PL. Also dead for 70. The Roche is critically low. If they don't buy back and go in now, they are giving up this Aegis. No PL for 70. No RP. So even if the PL buys back, I don't think OG could actually make the challenge. LG will get the Aegis. They give it to I mean, I think normally you want to give it to Lashrak, but of course the Bristleback just bought back, so you give it to him. And now I think you you got all your timings, you got all your items. It's time to actually just just put your your, your feet on OG's throat. I think it's it's really tough for OG now. And on the side, uh, Bristleback BKB is still coming. Maybe the one thing that LGD will want to wait for and was delayed by that buyback. But aside from that, like for OG, do they just split push here? Can they just stall out the game and try and wait out the Sages? It's so hard to split push against Blink Echo Slam, the Blink Batrider, and of course the Night Stalker. We're going to see the team fight one more time. The Fissure initially was so good that delayed them, but great movement here by maybe Jukes away. And yeah, sure, the, the Bristleback does die, but look at how much damage. Maybe he's doing it. He's just in the middle of everybody. And the zoning potential there. He forces the Rubik back. He forces Fly away. Even the Magnus has to get the hell out. So they can't really fully commit forward there, aside from that Bristle kill. Still waiting for one of those longer, larger scale fights where the Leshrac can potentially really take over. But at least for now, they just do not want to fight the Disco Pony when he's reigning the golden BKB. Shiva's guard coming out here from the Disco Pony as well. And then suddenly he really doesn't have to worry about... Anything. Oh, they're going to try to find Ana here. Could be caught out, dropping the chains, but he gets silenced. The Void comes Yules. through. Yules, can they time a stun just right? They do! They catch him They got the Ensnare as well. Can you actually cast it, though? They have enough. LGD, sick timing. They get a crucial kill on Ana. Out for a minute, and that might just be this Tier 2 bottom. They cluster up 20 Bloodstone charges. The maybe machine is gaining steam. Eight, one, and five, the score on him. He's been in almost every kill. And the Echo looking for the jump. No tell S4. Do try to run away. It looks like they'll get out of there. No pursuit. The Bat Rider, the Night Stalker, a bit late to join this. So missed opportunity mid. It's going to slow things down. It, it might actually save this tower bottom. As the Lesh did leave that lane. He's walking towards it again? No, he's going to pop the shrine on the bottom side. Good movement by OG. Yeah. They, they lose a, a crucial hero in the Ember Spirit, but they limit the structural damage. I think this game, more than the one that we saw from Virtus Pro, is showcasing the Night Stalker Helm build. Like, he's cycled through so many different creeps. Having the Dark Troll Warlord here, uh, again, the Ninsira pretty nice against a hero like an Ember Spirit. Yeah, and Victoria, the Winged Brothers. Looking for that opportunity to jump. There is no RP. Out for 70, and LGD make their committed move forward. 
banging on the tier three in this lane. TP coming in from the Ember. He gets hit by a stun right upon his arrival. Ana not respecting LGD. A huge kill to start it. And now the Liv trying to turn things around the left though. Very tanky has the BKB. Is going to force OG back on their heels. They can turn for this tower. The Ice Armor's there though. It's keeping it alive. Can't purge that off. And as the BKB ends, the tower drops. Will they commit for more here? Illusion's coming in. OG still holding the line. Buying time for the RP. But the buildings are dropping quickly. The Fissure's there. Forcing them back on their heels. Here comes the chain falls, but creeps to tank it up. For now, at least LGD staying alive. Still Ame has the Aegis. It's going to pop once. RP. And they do it again. RP, RP counter at 30. I don't know if they have enough time. Gray Skewer backward by S4. They purge him up as well under the tier 4. He explodes like a faulty S7. And now we're going to go in LGD trying to do enough damage to the racks. They will take it down. O11 will give up his life. Maybe, I think it's time for him to retreat. No, he wants to go back for more. They got two, they're looking for more. Aegis also down, and OG on the warpath. They did forfeit a melee, but still, they chase onwards. Maybe getting forced back. Will he make it out to safety in the trees? He lurks, he's got a BKB in 15. OG trying to find RP's these up. easier pickoffs. Yao is isolated, Yao is gonna go down to no-tail. A third kill in this chase. Looks like maybe RP is up. Still, still being hounded though. S4 gonna find him. Skewer him back. No RP. Big commitment. Still he's tanky. Can they bring him down? I think they are confident in this, but they've got four. BKB. Does he try to TP out here and get away? Does he have it? No, the TP's charges. on cooldown. S4 chasing forward for more. In comes the remnant. The chains as well. Lift him up. Blow him up. He's gonna deny himself. They give up four and an Aegis. Granted one of them a deny to get that lane of Rex. LGD did get that set of racks, which is the important victory, but I think they definitely could have gotten out without losing so much. OG getting some signs of light here as they're gonna get this tier two as well. Still though, I think OG is climbing back. 11 lurking with the echo. Tries to combo, but the interruption comes from Ana. Gets his PL back to safety. Now trying to juke out. And away into the trees he goes. See you later. Good feints coming here, but still no tail. Getting caught. They dive deeper for him. The lasso connection scores the kill. OG over Fisher one a bit. Now 11 looking to cut off this pesky Rubik. The Grand Magus has no TP. Did they scout that? Do they know? Doesn't seem they'll find him. The ward will, will identify him rotating into the base, but I think he's safely out of range now. 11 will not pursue. A very tense game. The gold lead has never exceeded 3,000, nor has the experience. That is very unusual at 34 minutes. Especially with the racks down, right? Like normally once you take that first lane of racks, you're you know, climbing a 5 to 10k net worth lead, but you're right. OG's definitely staying in. The problem is I, I just feel like LGD's itemization as well as their heroes are just better suited for this state, uh, stage of the game. Lich to me has really fallen off, has really unable to get his uh, level advantage in the lane stage. Rubik's doing a lot, but it can't just be the Jurax show, you know? You say that. <laughs> Jurax has proven us wrong before, but he's got a tall task, right? Like, they're still very reliant on his spell steals and the RP all being very well placed. And even if they do, a simple BKB timing, if maybe pops it or Ame gets it off, will just ruin that initiation. And you still have to deal with the Echo Slam counter. LG, lots of tools in their arsenal to punish OG aggression. The funny well, thing is, uh, Fly just threw his Chain Frost in the mid lane. Just, like, you know what? My Chain Frost is not doing a lot in team fights. I'm going to farm with it. Oh, this is the level 3 Chain Frost as well now, so very low cooldown on that. It, it can become a, a farming tool. Well, map constricted here. I think LG is going to play patiently. They're going to move around the map, kill both Shrines, wait for the next Roshan. I'm just spawning in about 1 to 3, 4 minutes, depending on the RNG on that one. And then you just go again. The Shrek's still king. He has only died once, right? Since uh, picking up his bloodstone. Still out farming the PL. This is such a far cry from what we saw yesterday when Virtus Pro were able to shut him down. But maybe showcasing the potential of the Lesh here. And I, I think the, the big difference is the speed of the game, which I've kind of brought up at the beginning. Remember yesterday when he was playing Lashrak, it was a venomous scale like every time to his face, every like five seconds. And then they were diving him. The follow-up was coming from supports. He was never allowed to farm. Instead, this game, OG laned against him passively with the Lich. Like, there was just no pressure. He was able to even get a solo kill against Ember Spirit. I think if you don't pressure maybe as a mid laner, you know, so much of the conversation is pressuring Ana, you know, shut him down. And the opposite needs to happen here for LGD. If you don't shut down, maybe he is going to take over the game. One of the most talented mid players out of China. 
LGD have followed up that early success mid well. They've l placed down a, a network of wards here to try and pincer OG into their base, prepping for the next Roche. Vision control already was likely to be theirs, just judging from the draft alone, and certainly has continued to be the case. OG have to resort to split push. They have to resort to guerrilla warfare tactics, hide in the trees, dodge fights, try and drag this game out. They, but they, they may very well have to take a risk and roll the dice at the Roche pit, Lumi. I don't know if you can give that Aegis cheese away to LGD and not be punished for it. For now, they hold back, defending their side of the map, only moving out when they feel it's safe. It is still nighttime, and as it gets to the stage of the game, it stays nighttime more and more with the darkness leveling up. LGD pressing in again on a de-warding journey as a squad, and Yao is going to strike Pater here. He finds one of those wards, but OG do start to move towards that location. Seems like they're thinking about a fight. They might get caught off the Bristleback running in. Ana has to be quick on the reactions here. He's got this Invis room. They want to perhaps crack the gem, but he gets clipped by Invisor. Then the Echo, heavy commitment for Ana. Jarex looking for the interrupt, though. He's got Moldy the Enchant Totem. That's not really the spell he needs. Slight of Fist, Zippity Doodah. See you later. Ana is out of there and away to safety. At least for now, S4 was coming in from the side, but Ana very close to dying. Yeah, they got really good chain center on Ana, but the damage didn't arrive yet. Lashrak was, I guess, a little bit late to the party. Yeah, he doesn't have the same mobility as some of these other LGD heroes. He had BOTs, but I guess there wasn't a, a creep to TP onto nearby. That's one other synergy that Night Stalker could give by the helm. You have a creep next to him all the time, so oh, that's true. The BOTs who could fly in. So I do want to talk about Lashrak's item choice here. He has an Agatum Scepter. This is my first time seeing it on Lashrak. The new Ags, or new in air quotes, is that you get a, a lightning bolt every 1.75 seconds. I believe it will target heroes or give priorities on hero, but there's a PL on the other side, so I'm not sure how effective it will be in this game. It could just be another way to maybe deal with those illusions as well. Does it work on illusions? Yeah, it, it, that's the thing. Like, it will target the illusion. Okay. Rather, it will target heroes, right? Like, gotcha. So. so maybe just looking to try and limit what No-Tail can do in these fights. We'll see. As S4 makes his move, Blink Skewer forward, they drop the Veil, can they change them perfectly? They maybe want to force out this BKB and then retreat, but he's patient. Ame, a tanky porcupine, and OG won't be able to force it out. Still they pursue though, still they have RP. Yeah, like you mentioned, I think they wanted to force out BKB or just a group up for LGD to set up for RP, but it's neither have been. LGD was very calm, they're like, okay, Bristleback is skewered in, he's very tanky, let's just chill. OG still taking some risks here at nighttime. Still pushing up, playing rather aggressively, trying to get their own network of wards down, maybe trying to find that pick off, but out comes 11. They understand that if they get a big win here, they can take Roche and uh, Cheese. Cheese and Aegis. Looking for the leap forward. RP! And now the RP! The three! Looking for more S4 with the chain frost. It's a bounce and a beauty from OG! LGD might have to blow these buybacks now! Lashrak, they don't call him the son of Magnus for nothing, Lumi. And of course, that was the first time they actually had vision advantage. A very important observe ward on that hill, overseeing the three heroes as a result. Perfect RP. They get two buybacks. Will OG be brave enough to take Roche? They're working, they're walking towards him, but okay, they're scouted. Yeah, they had to blow the double buyback. They don't have the Shaker, though. Again, and OG can look for the punish here. Jarex creeping into position, gets the lift off. This could be potentially a dieback. They're going to lose the Batrider. He's almost down. He will fall. They need to at least get on it. They have to find trades here. Skewer forward, dragging three back. Let's track, though. The Vanguard in the front lines as no test faints away. They are going to lose one. The Magnus down, but he's already committed his big load of spells. Can they find more? LGD need it. They need it now. PL will drop. He's also actually doesn't. No buyback. This could be costly. Now they're chasing out. Maybe looking for Ana on the low ground. They do lock him in position, slow him down. The lightning helps him. And maybe now up to 18 bloodstone charges again. They rush towards Roche. They know RP's on cooldown. PL may not have buyback for this. Okay. We can force the objective. Does Jerax go for the steal? He's got blink. He's got four staff. Maybe he drops a gem before that play happens. Do they have a gem detection here for the Invis Rubik? Doesn't look like if there is a dust on the Shaker, perhaps we'll just pop it, but Jarex also, second thoughts from him. He still lingers in the neighborhood. This is risky, but if anybody saw Afu's heroics <laughs> yesterday, they're gonna be tempted in Jarex's no, position. He won't risk it. 
Well, Aegis and Cheese will pass on to LGD. Great play by OG there, at least the first initial half of the fight. But coming in here on the second half, they didn't have the RP. Sure, you got a quick bat pickoff. And we're going to watch that one more time. It's oh. the ward on the high ground. This all came from that early push forward when OG got aggressive at night. This is the first time we've seen a good RP into a good chain frost. And you can see how dangerous they are, they are with those spells. But the second half of the fight, they don't have those spells. Lestrat just blinks in, and there's just no answer to him. These cores are very tanky on LGD's side, especially when the BKBs are up. And OG don't really have the best heroes to burst them without the RP. Exactly. So you can see in round two of the fight when the RP is on cooldown that it, while they can force the Batrider to die back and perhaps feeling confident they can just snowball the fight from there, they're actually still very reliant on that RP. I really like the item choice coming out maybe as well, using that Blink Dagger. You know, if you're on the front line, there's a lot of PL illusions. It makes your Aghanim Scepter less useful. But if you blink to the back line, you make Rubik's life very difficult. Same thing with Lich. And to a certain extent, even the Magnus. So, do, Does maybe just keep on getting stronger here? We haven't seen Lesh get to this stage of the game too often in recent memory. Well, you haven't been watching the LGD games, man. Like, <laughs> whenever he plays Lashrak, yesterday was the only exception. He gets to this stage of the game very frequently. So what's next for him? Any big items still to be picked up? Is it just down to play and positioning from here? Yeah, I think he's pretty much done, right? Look at his item. He's six slotted. He still has a cheese in backpack. They're looking to potentially jump this mid lane. Ana shoving out the waves. He does have the Lincolns and the Yules. But creeping in from the rear is a Batman. Look for the leap from Yao. Eleven's coming to position. He's got to be quick, slight. Oh. I think Yao came out of him a little bit too soon. You definitely want to wait for the Shaker to go in first whether it's just with the Fissure or the Echo Slam. Keep your eyes on buybacks right now. OG have the advantage in that department. All five with the buyback ready. LGD only three. But remember, they have Aegis, they have Cheese. And they are going to try to group up here, Lumi. They're going for it. OG, where's that Blink Skewer? Does S4 find his opening? Almost level 20 now. Still the PL Illusions chipping Ame down, but he's completed the heart. He's almost 4,000 health. He is truly a beefcake. They try to skewer him back, chip away, bring that mana down, try to remove some of the quill spam in these fights. OG still just fainting, but the commitment comes from LGD. They get off the lasso. Now the echo follow-up. Can they burst anyone down? Magnus are oh! committed. It's a beauty from S4. Walking them in position. Can they finish them off though? They're so damn tanky. Maybe stays alive. Maybe will finally go down, and now they have Ame on the run. The Quills are stacking up. He's a tough kill. That's for damn sure. The short so buyback. Back. Here comes the buyback. They know there's no RP. They know there might not be a Magnus either, and they're going to come in for this. Bring in the Lash. He's very far back, though. He's all the way at that wave in the middle near the tier two tower bottom. At the same Ame time, he's fighting against the world. He's not dying yet. At least not yet. Here we go. He's still regening quite quickly. Still has the Aegis, so he's Where's the fine. burst? Can they kill Ame? They've got to do it Skewer here. Back. Twice. They're going to skewer him back. Let's now, try. maybe, coming in, but does get controlled. Victoria's in deep as well. He'll fall out more quickly. Remnant forward, big commitment. They've almost slain the beast. Ame, low, low, low. And he finally, finally dies. dies. But Let's now, try. maybe with the BKB, look for the turn. OG got to get the hell out. Two arrows stun. Commitment with the nukes. But they all stay alive. Yule Scepter's popping everywhere. Now the commitment forward from the Shaker. Can they finish him up? Glimmer King runs to the tree line. Shame He's run. alive. On three heroes, nonstop. Skewer's back in. Maybe he's out of buyback. He's gonna die. Maybe he will. Out for 70. It's not even that long, to be honest. The Bloodstone might get him back in the fight before OG can punish. Now they try again to kill off the Bristle. He's so damn tanky. He's the one going in. They found one in the trees in the midst of this. They're gonna bring him down. Chewy through on us. Now under Jarrett's LGD outlasting OG here. Can they get more? Rubik buys back. Victoria's very low. They got vision on him on the PL Illusions. Can they actually get that very critical kill? Rest of LGD are retreating. Ame cannot be killed either. They're gonna try. Purge him up, slow him down. But Shaker's lurking. So is the Batrider. Amazingly, no split push, no ratty. All the waves still very favorable for LGD, but they didn't even take the tower, Lumi. After all that, OG standing strong and where we once had eight buybacks going into that fight. Right now, we've only got the gold for two. That was the Aegis and Cheese push. You gotta keep in mind now, LGD down three buybacks. If OG could big, make a big move, three-man RP, three-man Chain Frost, and you get two to three random kills on heroes that doesn't have buyback, you could paint a scenario where actually OG could go to the other side and take the racks of their own. They've got a minute, no Ember Spirit. That was a dieback for him. He doesn't have the Bloodstone to work with. 
Can they make something happen? The Night Stalker X also picked up. So the, the vision advantage deep behind enemy lines could come into play now. That flying true sight, always a threat as they move in. LGD once more under the breach. Look for the opening. Ame for now turning his back to OG, shrugging off the damage. And S4 creeping through the trees, trying to find that dream RP. The son of Magnus lurks. He looks for the jump. Eleven's also they see him. They punch him first. Now S4 has the skewer back, and that buys time for LGD. They can keep on hitting this tower, probably bring it down. It's a so such a slow push that Frost Armor is actually doing so much work. Okay, they bring him back. Bristleback's out of mana now. Round two, and Ember is respawning. I think LGD... Content with this, are going to back away, Lumi. They want that next rush before they go for a push again. <laughs> this game is just <laughs> putting me on the edge of my seat. My, my heart is pumping. But like you mentioned, the Night Stalker Axe, I think over the, like, the long run, I, I think it's going to give LGD the advantage. They also have a gem, probably should pass it to the Night Stalker so he can begin dewarding and uh, start getting map control back on their side. But still, a danger point for LGD is that right now you don't have that Aegis and Cheese. You don't have buybacks on three of your heroes, and OG could just hell marry you with a big smoke. And they have not been afraid to do it. Even fighting into the Night Stalker at nighttime without vision, they've still made bold forays into LGD territory. It's certainly not out of the question they could try. And perhaps what could help here, they do have that silver edge on the PL now, so maybe they can focus this bristle down a little more quickly in upcoming fights. Already working towards his next damage item. He is a level 25 PL. Yeah. But if you find them, right? Like, if you want to just look at OG Vision, there is none. Oh, you're going to find the Bristle. But do you want to, like, jump him in right. the, like, when they're all sitting there waiting to counter-initiate? Just put yourself in S4's position, right? Like, you don't see anything. Where do you jump? You don't jump. He's just as afraid. So it, it's tough for OG to kind of make this comeback play. They're going to try, though. Sending those PL illusions to shove out the lanes. LGD in their own right. Still just waiting for Roche. Ame is going to show himself. Veil deployed. PL illusions handing him back. Not particularly adept at killing those, in fact. He's going to run. Turn his back and wait. Roche could be up very soon. And it all comes down to this fight. If LGD take a convincing winner on the pit, OG might just crumble. We're also getting to a stage of the game where maybe uh, Bloodstone is actually getting quite low in terms of charges. I think at one point this game had close to 20, maybe 16 to 18, now down to 8. And this is critical in, in terms of how long this, uh, the game has gone on. You want a lot of charges so you can have that quick respawn in late game. But won't have that option here. 4.3k on him. Any other big items coming for you as you look across these two lineups? Something that could change the equation in upcoming fights? I feel like it's not about his item choice. Maybe he could get a Hex. That would be like, critical in terms of picking some of these very key heroes. And he does have a Blink. So it is a Blink Hex initiation, but in deep right now is No-Tail. Eleven actually gave a quick swing at him. I think they've seen No-Tail. He's in too far. LGD now want to chase him out. The Fissure comes through. S4 is waiting, but he gets caught out. The Lasso's there. Jerex with the steal. Who will he RP? lasso? RP on three. Them, but where's the ball of damage? OG need more. Ame's rushing in. He shrugs it off. Lesh is staying alive too. And OG, they're going to wait for round two of this engagement. Now the commitment forward. The Batrider's down. That's the one hero advantage. The echo from 11. Swing and a miss. Here, Bata Bata says no tail chasing up towards Victoria. The lift comes on the Bristleback. They're going to drag him back. They really don't want to focus him. They'd like to ignore him, kill his team, then come back for him. No tail will poke. Will prod from the rear. But really, it's about these squishier backliners. And they're not finding too many. The rest of them stagger back to the base. OG on the chase. S4 has a blink skewer available. Will he see that opening? Still no buyback on LGD heroes for two minutes. OG just searching for something, but RP has been spent. And I think OG just have to back off. Roshan is back really, really soon. This <laughs> see LGD are just gunning for this Magnus every single fight. S4 running around in Shadow Blade, and they still managed to find him up a hill with the blink lasso. And he gets off a good 3 hero RP, but it's not like the ideal timing for OG where they're ready to RP, just kind of has to throw it out and then they hope to react. But here's the thing though, there's no more gem on LGD now. If they, they probably need to buy one. I'm not sure what the cooldown is on the, on the gem in the shop. 
They stole the gem in the last fight, and this is critical. If he is in that Shadow Blade, they won't be able to find him again. Victoria being hounded by four. Batrider also gets caught. This is going to be huge here for They have the stolen lasso as well, but the Fissure from 11. God, he would love an Echo. Mike hitting them for it, he says, but it's too late. Bat down for 60. OG making all the right moves here down the stretch. They're going to bring the Night Stalker out as well. They've got 80 seconds to work with. No Night Stalker, no Batrider, no Flying Fiends in the night. And now they chase forward. Out comes the Chain Frost once again. Bouncing decently. Jarex there with the lasso. Tiki may be able to fight, but down he goes. Eleven stays alive. OG looking for more. They're going to chain him up. Can they lock him down? The Bristleback's there, but again, they ignore him. Maybe finding additional kills, though. He does bring down Fly. The supports have been slain. They have wrangled the Bristle. They look to finish him off. He's dropping. He's dropping. The maybe comes back in. Triple kill for him. Looking for more of the Fissure as well. On the dodge. Second on respawn time, the heart on no tail. It's the heart of OG right now. His illusions are so tanky. I keep saying that Lashrek will do a lot of damage to the BL illusions, but because of the heart that he had for such a long time, he's able to tank through absolutely everything. No tail looking like a jewelry shop has all the gems on him right now. He needs to take it back his base. And critically, guess what? Roshan's alive right now. Will OG be able to take this Roshan and the Aegis and Cheese away from LGD? We'll have another look at this absolutely crazy fight with the Silver Edge. They can almost bring Ame down, but 11's Echo, you can see it's still not cooled down, still not cooled down, and gets it right now. Comes in with the Fissure first. The follow up's there as Ana is coming out of the sleight of fist. The timing could not have been more fortunate for LGD. A second or two later, they get that kill, they back away. Ana, man, I thought he used that already. Yeah, I think what we're seeing in these fights is that Lashrak isn't doing enough damage, at least against the heroes that matter. Sure, his AoE damage is immense, you know, but he can only kill heroes like Lashrak, or sorry, kill Rubik or, or Lich at this point. And I think that's where the Aghanim Scepter comes in. It helps you to deal that pinpoint damage. But again, it's just not that good against They're gonna the They're going to try here for No-Tail. He was going for the Roach. The Sheba's coming through. The Lightning from range, blocking him down, stunning him up. Jarex looking for the save. First the four step, then the lift, but still they silence him. Still the control. He doesn't have those defusal blade charts. The Lasso coming through as well. Stolen by Jarex, but he won't be able to use it right now, it seems. On his feet, No-Tail gets wiped out. Out for 100, but does have the buyback. OG could still fight this. No RP for 10, so even if he buys back, I think Roshan might be too low at that point, although LGD's not They're committed. They're scared. Yeah. They, they don't want to overextend. You mentioned buybacks, and we're at a stage of the game where nobody's buyback is on cooldown, so even though we can see who has it, who doesn't, LGD don't know. Well, LGD will start on the Roshan. It's going to be not the fastest one ever. But, but look at the position of Yao. He's ready for a smoke play from OG. He's going to break it on Ana, break it on S4. Or, in fact, the whole OG squad have been revealed. The war in the lane and the darkness. stops them out. There it's is a, no vision they on They might actually jump on this Lumi. OG are lurking in the tree lines. But you can see heroes looking like they want to leave that pit. Now they're gets content Roche. with a potential Roche. And it is about to drop. Aegis snagged up by Ame. And now the bat can lunge forward. Look for the jump. Who's he going to find? Hunting OG through the trees, they look for Ana, jumping back to the mid lane, but the Goo is going to stick onto him, he gets slowed down, he tries to remnant backwards, but Yao is there with the catch, the lasso again! RP, he blinks into a stun, and Fork didn't activate his BKB inside, and he couldn't get off a good RP. Now the chase forward, Ame looking to muscle S4 down, skewer to the high ground, try to live, try to survive, OG must retreat, No Tail holds the line at least for now, but being hounded by nukes, pounding into him. He scurries backwards, still they chase in pursuit. Ana also slowed in danger. Flame Break pushes them back. No fight back on PL. Of oh, maybe. Now on the fly, onto the high ground, into no tail. They run him down. Rough shot through OG. They're crumbling here. LGD dive deeper, straight to the tier fours. That's the call. They want to finish off OG right here, right now. No RP, no PL. No chance unless Shaker from S4. Gets Skewer right into the base. That's fence for four staff. Gets him back out. But the buildings, they are falling very quickly. Diabolic Edict right now is doing so much work. Buster your courage, OG. You have only moments before LGD. Take this game one, and there's the GG. LGD have done it. Amazing play by Earthshaker towards the end. He just blinked into the base. Just. Gave space and time, Fissure, Enchant Totem, Echo Slam, buying time for that last track to do the damage to the final sets of buildings. What a carry performance by maybe. Last track was huge.
So many incredible individual plays in that game. I don't even know where to begin. You go back to the first gank and there was that slight of his dodge from Ana and it felt like the whole game was like that. Everybody making their own plays where there was Batrider initiations, Night Stalker getting off crucial silences, the big RPs multiple times for S4, the skewer backwards, but LGD, they just outlasted OG down the stretch. I think the big problem was that they, de they depended too much on the Magnus, right? It, the only fights they won was due to S4 landing at three four, four man RP. Imagine and if OG had a, another weapon where they could initiate and then S4 could follow up. Yeah, the only follow-up was Jerex if he stole the right spells and in some of those crazy fights late game, like, how do you stay safe? He was just getting hounded by How do you track? stay safe and also steal spells? Maybe he just jumps on you. Yeah. You have to blink away. At that point, you might not be in position. I don't know that OG could have executed that much better in the fights. Like, they played them really well. Yeah, I, I felt like the LGD draft where they just keep banning out all of Jerax's hero might be the way to go. It was the Snatch Magnus strategy that OG employed. That was the key to their draft. That's how they started the game. Can't really fault them for that. OG, look at LGD. They're coming into this series 8-1 and one on the mag, but even denied their mag, LGD still prevail here in game one. What an unbelievable game of Dota. That game had so many plays. Those battles were so long. Happened over such a long amount of time. I can't wait to talk about it. Joining me up here, we got PP Design, and of course, the man himself, it's Bulba. What a pleasure to have you here, Bulba. It's good to be up here. Actually, maybe it's not also because I could have been playing, but yeah. If I wasn't playing, it's probably the best thing to do. Well, dude, so. I got to know Boba. Talk to me about that last match. That was insane. Yeah, it was. Uh, the, the team fights that OG did. I mean, I think uh, I thought LGD was going to have a clean like wipe. I thought they outdrafted uh, OG quite well, but OG just team fought so... Like, their execution in the team fights was so good, the way they used their vision and stuff, especially versus Night Stalker. I didn't think that that Magnus would be able to get uh, any good RPs off, because it's really hard to play Magnus versus uh, Bat and NS, especially at nighttime. But S4 played really well that game, so. A ton of back and forth. We're starting to see some really good games now that we have these top teams emerging into the uh, later stages of this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> that graph was just, like, up and down and up and down and up and down, and then, like, one hour in, I think there was only a 5K net worth difference or something, even less than that, maybe. Yeah. LGD, one of the few teams to pick Leshrac, maybe seems to like it mid. I think that it, its best matchup is probably versus PL. Yeah. So maybe that pick from OG just uh, a little too yeah. early. It just matched up incredibly well against both their core heroes. Ember and PL both are, you know, these... Squishier agility heroes that have to get on top of Lushrak, and once this Lushrak gets his BKB Shivas, um, he just sits there and kills everything around him. Yeah, and Octarine Core too. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he had one this game. Oh, he didn't? No, but the, the ridiculous thing that I saw was that I hadn't seen before was the Aghanims combined with his level 25 talent. Because well, usually, what is his level 25 talent too? Uh, there's the Diabolic Edict one that makes you know your Edict do a ton of damage, okay. and you also have plus three seconds of Lightning Storm Soul. Okay. So every lightning storm that popped out of that Aghanims, uh, which is every 1.75 seconds or something, just mm -hmm. slows for, it's like a purge, right? In terms yeah. Of slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it lasts for so long. So this Ember, like in every fight, he tried to remnant away, and this remnant is just going <laughs> yeah, yeah, super that. slowly. Just like an old, old man Ember spirit crawling yeah. away. Yeah. And every time the fight recap graph was brought up, I mean, Lashrak was like close to half the team damage almost every single team fight. Yeah. yeah. Think. It's, uh, it's one hero that we haven't seen that much uh, this tournament. Yeah. It was incredibly popular during, during TI5. Um, but this tournament, I think LGD's the, the only team who's, who's been playing him. Yeah. But it seems like it works incredibly well for them in the, in the, right, in the right draft. Are they, just, or, go ahead. Are they kind of like newbie? They last pick his hero. And uh, they usually, it's the, his hero or Amy's hero, and it just like, fits the draft perfectly. Like the storm game that newbie did yesterday was like the perfect storm game. And then this game. I think in general, they, I think a new, uh, LGD, we played them yesterday, and uh, they definitely feel way stronger. We scrimmed them as well uh, before the groups, but they've like fixed a lot of their things. I thought before going into this tournament that them and LFY were like the two best Chinese teams, like after MDL, because they, uh, MDL, they got top two, right? Yeah. And LGD won the best of five. And it was super close. It was like uh, three to two. But um, I think the way LGD, the, their, the way they position themselves in the mid game is the best of any Chinese team. Like playing them yesterday, like both games we had pretty good early games, but then when playing them in the mid game, it's like uh, it felt like playing versus Wings. I don't know, like last year when you played versus Wings, even if you lost the early game, 
like uh, even if they lost the early game, they always like they actually always lost the early game. Yeah. There was like this thing like my friends made a bet, like Wings would always give up first blood every game, and it was like 90% they would give up first blood, yeah. and then uh, they would always do these things in the mid game which come back like the way they show on the map and the way they play on their vision. And I, when I played Russell GD yesterday, I felt that it was this. Uh, I think a lot comes a lot from old 11. I think he's like a big shot caller on this team, and I also think Yao is a big shot caller. And like you can see in the game, like they, I feel like they're like them and Alfy play a lot like wings. I think just, the, the later a game gets, the more the better teams stand out. There's so yeah. many more different decisions. Like the early game can oftentimes be a little static, and there's only you know there's only so many things you can do during the laning phase. But once you get into like the mid to late game, you're the opportunities for different decisions are everywhere, yeah. and that's what makes yeah. good teams win. Yeah, that's why I think like uh, these teams like Wings and this, this year LGD, LFY, and Newbie they stood out because like before Chinese teams that always go around as a ball in the mid game, and then now I feel like the Chinese teams are maximizing their efficiency a lot more. Like if you see Watch how they, they play a lot more split on the map, and that was a lot of you saw that on the old the Western teams you like Secret at TF uh, TI6, or sorry T Secret at TF5. You know like you guys played a lot split. Yeah. And then uh, you can see like these Chinese teams, they incorporated to that. It's like, really cool to see that they're taking a lot of these Western ideas and putting them in their Chinese philosophy. It's like you can't team fight them, and they're also out efficiencing you. And like that's why I feel like these Chinese teams are just owning this tournament because they they have best of both worlds right now. So. There's honestly so much to talk about from that insane match, and I gotta ask Purge. I don't even know what clip you choose, man. I could, I could <laughs> use any fight that yeah. happened. They're all amazing. They're all super close, but. Yeah, they were they were all really great. Uh, the one that I did end up grabbing was this, uh, the bot racks fight. Now, the, the cool thing about this was with 43 minutes in the game, less than a 1K gold advantage for LGD. It was that close. And really, OG's win condition, like the panel pointed out, is Magnus. He's looking when his opponents are as grouped as possible. And usually when you're going high ground, it's kind of dangerous because it kind of funnels you into this area where if you get too clumped up here, you're going to end up going down. So um, his job is basically to look for those opportunities and uh, try to get the RPs if possible. But if he doesn't have those, what he can do instead is end up skewing one person really far away from their teammates, which buys their team some time to do damage. Now, again, because the Magnus is really important here, um, the Bat Rider is looking for him if possible. He wants to get some vision on him, jump on, and disable him. And if he can grab him with his lasso and follow that up with stuns, they can kill Magnus, which then uh, uh, disables any potential of him getting an RP off. But the crucial thing that he just did was the uh, Echo Slam came just a fraction of a second too late. If that hits, he stays stunned, possibly dies. But he gets the Yules off, which means that after his Yules ends, He's clumped up around his enemy heroes because they thought that they had this kill opportunity. And because he was able to get those disables off or get the Yules off just in time, it buys them some opportunity to kill a few heroes. They got three. They weren't able to kill the Bristleback. He's able to escape. But man, every fight was just intensely close, just like this one. I don't even know how many buybacks there were that game. Uh, probably like 10? 10, 15? Five, five, at, at least, yeah. Bristleback yeah. makes these crazy fights from time to time where you just, you know, you're yeah. trying to kill everybody else and ignore him, yet he's just in the way and he was like unkillable that game. He was just way too tanky. One you impressive thing that I just, sorry, one impressive thing that I just noticed was Fi actually had a beyond gal -like streak on, on Lich. Yeah, he wasn't dying at all. It's pretty mind boggling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the Lich ultimates in those fights, you just kept seeing them dance around endlessly. And, you know, I, I wanted to come back to something you said earlier, Bulba, which is that you felt like LGD had the better draft. You talked a little bit about the vision in terms of Night Stalker, Batrider against Magnus. Do you think that was the core deficiency, or were there other aspects uh, of the LGD draft? I mean, every team, every game at this TI, I look at one team, I feel like they have the easier to play draft. And I think that team usually ends up winning. Like, uh, in this game, I feel like the team with the Lesh Rack and the Peel, uh, they're going to essentially have a better, easier game. And then Dyer has this Magnus that's going to have to hit this RP. And they have no real hero that can tank spells. So like, then instead what happened is like LGD is going to run with the bristle back in front. And as long as the uh, the less track doesn't get picked off in the fights, like the team fight for Radiant will always be better. Yeah. And Dire will have to have like uh, they don't really have someone that do to do that. And I think like in all these games you can kind of see that like, yesterday in the um, LFY versus uh, VPs games, you could see like I felt uh, VP had to severely outplay LFY in both games, and VP just needed to hit like one chrono. And get one AL, and then uh, the game is won. Yeah, Batrider yeah. Bat had a pretty easy game yeah. um, in terms of like finding initiation. Uh, Magnus had a much harder job playing against Night Stalker with yeah. all that reduced vision, yeah. and Batrider had Bristleback just kind of running in the front and seeing what was up, and that allowed Bat to go out and find that. You know, like in Purge's clip, he was able to find that Magnus before yeah. Magnus jumped them. Yeah. You think it caught them off guard with the with the Batrider? Because yeah, that was really good. Uh, I, I haven't seen any Chinese team do that at all yet, where they do the juke. 
And uh, that's the classic, you know, uh, we, we did it before in the sermon, you guys did it as well. Yeah. So we both know the Duke, the good old Jebaited trick, where you show the bat and then you put him yep. on the... They're adapting support. and they're learning. Yeah, which was really sick, actually, because that was a really good shaker game. Even though Old Eleven had a rough time, I think he could have definitely played better, but uh, the pick kind of just screwed with uh, yeah. Dyers, especially how the bat laned, because you just sticky the ember mid, and then the ember is like, uh, can't do anything. And, and, and bat also is really good versus Lich. Because Lich doesn't really want to play versus Bat in the early game. So. Well, the amazing thing is that that was only game one. There is going to be a second game happening between OG and LGD. And of course, the team's taking their customary break between matches. And at this point, it's time to find out who the winners are for the short film contest for this TI machine. Take it away. Thanks very much, Sean. You guys are looking good on that panel. Yes, as you catch your breath here in the Key Arena. Is everyone doing okay? Yeah, I think everyone's having a good time. What a fantastic game to start that series off. We'll be seeing more sexy Dota in a moment. But first, we catch our breath and start to announce the winners. You guys have thrown submissions at us so many, and yet just three are going to go ahead and take those prizes home. And so it's my great pleasure in third place to let you know the ward. Let's take a look.